I, I think that's one of the problems in journalism is that efficiency is really prized. And people, you know, the schedules are just insane. I mean, especially if you know somebody who's doing a newspaper job, it's, it's, it's really inhuman. And it's hard to let things drop. And I basically always tried to make sure, I mean, I, and actually I structured all of my New Yorker contracts um, so that I wasn't committed to producing a certain number of stories or words a year because I just felt like I needed that leeway to step away if it's, you know, if it's not working. And I felt like China, you know, had been just a phenomenal experience as a writer, but you're going to learn other stuff when, you, when you're doing, when you're working in other places and doing other types of stories. And that, that was definitely true. I mean, it's so, so different reporting in America. I mean, some things are the same, but there's, there's enough differences that you... So what did China make you notice about America? The way people talk. I mean, that's the, the main that thing. that they talk, right? Yeah, They'll that they talk. They'll tell you their life story yeah. you know, over a beer. And one of the reasons these stories take a long time in China is that people are not that forthcoming. And I mean, there was a period when the politics had a lot to do with it. I think that's not really the core reason nowadays for most subjects. It's, it's just people don't naturally like to talk that much about themselves. I, I think it's not an intensely individualistic society traditionally. And people feel a little bit uncomfortable, like they're being arrogant or being presumptuous if they're putting themselves at the center of the world. And what do you think the biggest differences are between the way people in China see themselves and, and, and the way that they're seen by Americans? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think that's sort of a general thing about st coverage of the developing world. I feel like especially kind of in the post 9-11 period that we, you have these two categories, you know, people that need to be helped, people that are, need to be pitied, or people that are to be feared. And, and, and you know, there, there is a fair amount of that with China. I always felt like it sort of misses so much of the human element of the place. And, and part of my job there as a correspondent was to describe the texture of everyday life and, and, and to explain to the readers that it wasn't totally foreign. It's a very different world. There's a lot of cultural differences. But there are certain things that are common. I mean, one thing is humor. And you know, the, I've always found China a very funny place. Chinese have a good sense of humor. They laugh at the same things that we laugh at. They're and very self-effacing, like Americans are. Yeah. You know, they laugh at themselves, really. They do, yeah. yeah. No, I, the, the, humor, the humor translates, to be yeah. honest. You know? and, and, um, we like people that fall down. <laughs> that always goes over well. Mr. Bean is still there. Yeah, they love Mr. Bean. It's in every, every airport terminal in the country. He's British, but yeah. But, sure. but they... Uh, but, you know, so I felt like, I mean, humor is, a, is an important thing, and I think it's not often there when you write about, you know, the developing world. It's too serious, we can't do that. And I think it can be, that can be sort of condescending when, when you, uh, you're, you're sort of not recognizing the richness and, and, and just the livability, you know, the, 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 the human aspect of life. And so I always wanted to include that. And also, I just couldn't be engaged as a writer about China if, it, if I wasn't including the humor, because it was so, so integral to what I was doing. I mean,